happy Sunday to each and every one of the patrons of the Independent Investor Channel. Thank you so much for uh, your time and support of the message. Um, we do this product here uh, to speak about um, one of those companies that I think uh, have a real special pedigree about them. Uh, it is one that I feel like in the marketplace is relatively unknown. Uh, so I'm uh, self-charged myself with sharing my perspective because I think um, where the masses could benefit from this message, I think it's going to become very, very apparent as to why we're doing this now at a time that I think is uh, a calm before the storm. What we're going to do in this video is I'm going to talk about the stock positives and negatives. We're going to talk about the company positives and negatives. And I think you guys are going to find out that when I comb over companies and I look at the fundamentals of the company, what they're doing, um, and Hylion is one of those companies that is at the very, very beginning stages. So I think it is incumbent upon uh, investors. You can be a steward of a, of a stock and not take a position in the company. You can be an advocate for the green initiative, uh, moving in a direction that um, relaxes our reliance upon um, uh, uh, petroleum fuels and, and those fuels alike that seemingly dominate our transportation nexus, uh, both in the air, uh, on land and on the sea. And those initiatives have really started to come to the forefront now. So it's super important from more of a general population to become interested in this story um, as it pertains to this initiative and movement that Hylion is trying to bring a solution forward. And I think all too often the message gets misconstrued in that the perceived failings this um, early on in the evolution of this company sometimes gets muddled down in understanding what these guys are trying to do. And the, the bottom line is the world is going to be better off with this solution than, than, it, than if it just goes away and fades into oblivion. Okay. I think the class eight trucking state space needs competition. I do. Um, do I think Hylion has taken too long to come to market? Um, I think that's absurd. <laughs> I, I really do. I, I don't see the correlation of somehow Hylion was in a dominant position to introduce their product ahead of everybody else. Uh, and somehow that this introduction of new products is somehow going to drown out Hylion. I think Hylion is going to carve out its niche. Uh, barring a few catalysts that I'm going to speak about on the company negative side um, during this weekly address, I think you're going to find that when you look at Hylion as a whole, I think you're going to find that it is an absolute privilege for me to cover this company from my perspective. And there, there's a couple of reasons why. I watched a special last night on Netflix and it was called Eat the Rich. Um, I highly encourage you guys that follow me, that respect my opinion, uh, to go on there and watch that. A few things that I took away from that and, and the lens that I took away from that, okay? For you guys that don't know, it was about the GameStop short squeeze that was really exacerbated by social media until Robinhood pulled the plug um, on the stock to be bought right at around the $500 level. Mind you, this stock started about $7 when David Cohen started to accumulate the shares. And then in between, uh, in be in between that, there were a number of different catalysts, Elon Musk um, and... Um, and many others that uh, really kind of helped push that forward. There was some social media influence as well. And I, I, I sat back as I was watching it. I ripped through all three of the, of the series documentaries that kind of chronicled this. And I listened very, very closely to the rationale that some of the investors took as to why they jump, jumped on board with this wonderful investment in, in GameStop. And I kept waiting and for the three episodes, there was never, ever any discussion about the fundamentals of, of GameStop. It was always about the opportunity to exploit the short position that the hedge funds had over the company. And it was never really about 
the fundamentals of the company, which were actually aiming right toward bankruptcy, massive debt on the books, not generating any type of meaningful revenue, losing money hand over fist. The company was in trouble. A short, uh, uh, the short position reflect, reflected that in that there would have been nothing in way of fundamentals to turn the script on the company itself. Rather, the group of, of perfect storm that came together identified the problem with the stock itself had nothing to do really with the company. I think that they could have just taken a, any company made of widgets and had a short interest as high as they did. I think it was around 130% short interest on the company and manufactured uh, so much share buying in the company that it spiraled out of control. And that snowball effect made uh, people that had no interest at all in ever investing. First of all, a lot of people admitted that GameStop was their first and only stock based on a, a recommendation through the workplace. And, and they just went out and blindly bought the stock. And a lot of people made a lot of money. Now, the few people that they chronicled actually I was very, very interested in that they did not declare uh, money amounts at the end of the series. One individual made about $300,000 or so at the end, I think, which in, in retrospect really isn't that much for how much the stock rode up that quickly and was able to get out um, on the downtrend after Robin Hood, Robin Hood pulled the plug. M my friends, the reason why I, I mention this and I always like to come with a, um, a unique point of view, and it's one that um, my viewing audience, I feel like I'm very unknown on YouTube, and I like that. For the people who make their way in and they consume the minutes that I put through on YouTube, they are 100% genuine, okay? And um, the screaming cat or the meow cat or the Mr. Gill, whatever, I thought the uh, trial and GameStop was very, very telling. Um, and it's something that I listened to intimately in that, you know, what was was Gill coming on to hype the stock? Um, and, and I think it, it spoke to um, the opportunity that Gill found in that moment to actually share what it is that he knew through information, through social media, no different than the, that she would share um, at a backyard barbecue or at you know a family reunion of sort. He just happened to share his on social media. And the question now with the emergence of influence on social media is, is that ethical? Um, is that accepted? Uh, is, that, is that okay to do? Now the case ended up inevitably being dismissed, and the and the um, um, the charges that were being leveled on a civil matter against Mr. Gill were actually inevitably dropped. And I thought, no doubt, his his rationale and his statement to um, the um, House Judiciary Committee at the end of the, um, the 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 trial was was very very telling. Look, that this is no different than Wall Street. Um, sharing information across each other's networks to formulate a hypothesis on a specific movement. Furthermore, they talked about the access to the Bloomberg reports uh, from the institution's perspective that cost about $20,000 uh, per account. And these hedge funds, one of them said that they're spending just shy of $400,000 for 25 different accounts every single year as an expenditure to buy that edge. Retail investors don't have that edge. So the real takeaway from me from watching Eat the Rich, and I highly encourage you guys to spend a few moments, blast through it, um, about 45 minute episodes. It's very, very telling in that the, the, the run up of the stock uh, in, in uh, uh, GameStop and AMC was mentioned as well as far as the, and, and also the, the downfall of Robinhood, which is what I've been calling for on the channel. Um, ever since Robinhood came public, I took a lot of scrutiny for it, mind you, my friends, um, just like I took a lot of scrutiny for my analysis on ARK ETFs. Um, one of my most hated videos, one of my most popular videos and one of my most hated videos why, why do I suggest that? It's not to toot my own horn. Um, I could care less about your opinion of me. I could care less, okay? But here's the thing. 
Until we start to identify that retail investors are not provided an advantage, they are not provided the information. And one thing that I took away from Eat the Rich, I was sitting on my uh, couch, and if they were to ask me about my expertise as a retail investor, I think they would have got a different response than, oh, I just invest in the stock because my friend told me about it. I think that perception of retail investors needs to stop. And I think the um, uh, um, idea that all retail or, or all hedge funds and all institutional investors are somehow all above board, I think that needs to stop too. I really think there needs to be a little bit more of a mediating across the different uh, spectrum and understanding that individual uh, individual ability in the stock market is weighed against individuals, not against uh, a, a grander type of uh, benchmark. In other words, my performance in the stock market has no business being weighed against other retail investors, nor does it have any business being weighed against institutional investors out, uh, out there that are somehow perceived to be beating the market, which is something that historically I've been a scholar of uh, and can tell you, my friends, does not exist, okay? It does not exist. There's been a few, and the people who want to be associated with that very elite crowd who have put together a string of an, of an investment career, some uh, spanning multiple decades, and want to be called upon with that group are in fact not creating those results themselves. And so I think the misconception and, and somehow the, the false narrative exists be, behind defining this elite group that somehow have the answers to the stock market. And I'm here to tell you that that's just not true. And if we can redefine and recalibrate our idea of opportunity in the stock market, we can approach stock market investing from much more of a clear perspective, um, not to be jaded on what you hear about different equities, um, hear about the general sentiment in the market, which I'm going to talk about, and even the sentiment surrounding Hylion, you can sit back and say, ah, that, that, that just doesn't sound right. I, I'm not, I don't agree with that. Or, yeah, that sounds right. Perhaps maybe there is some reason for delay when we're, you're evaluating a company on one side of the spectrum or not. As it pertains to Hylion, and I think you guys will benefit greatly from my opinion, and that's what this is. Uh, for full transparency, I've added 1,000 shares within the last couple of weeks, uh, and I'm prepared to add more uh, as the company um, seems to be uh, exhausting its selling. Uh, at least the charts would suggest that that is the case here when we're talking about the stock. There was a lot of people that jump on the bandwagon and pushed the stock as it approached $5 just a couple of months ago. I thought you guys were crazy for doing that. You have to be very, very patient because what we have here over the next 15 months is the most critical stages of the company in giving us that tell on a few catalysts that I think the company has not delivered on just yet. I believe that they will. Um, and once those things happen, we, we can sit back and we can say, hold on a second. This story has the potential. Now, mind you, if the Hylion story dissolves and goes away, um, I, will, I will have lost a few dollars and there will be a few community members that will have lost a few bucks. Um, and, and for me, it was 100% uh, uh, based on my conviction of the company. And if that in fact happens, okay, with everything that we know about the company, um, I will not apologize. I will not um, uh, be critical of myself. Um, I'm a forward thinking individual. And what I look at right now with this company um, I, I see a pedigree of real change over the next 15 months as this company evolves to a place. And I'm going to talk about that when I talk about the company positives and why I think that's going to happen as the company evolves and moves out of this very, very critical stage. But for right now, accumulating the shares is about as, um, as much of a green light as you can possibly imagine. Um, I think here, sub $3, you're being provided a gift driven down by, I feel like, is market sentiment. 
and not necessarily what Hylion has or has not done. Uh, talking to a lot of CEOs, they say the same thing about current market conditions, really just discrediting all progress. Um, I think if Hylion came out with 500 orders this next month, I don't think it would be a, a catalyst to move the stock, but 25%, perhaps maybe we reach the $4 mark, but it's not going to be anything to actually drive the stock forward until market sh sentiment shifts. And market sentiment right now is about as bad as it can possibly be. That's why it's super important for me to continue uh, to foot stomp this message. I've been dabbling with the idea of, of actually pulling the plug on this highly on product on the independent investor channel for a couple of different reasons. Um, I, I'm, I'm not doing this project to hype the stock. Okay. I'm not doing that. Um, I am a hundred percent driven to share the highly on story through my channel. That's it. And a lot of people tune into me for, for just that. Here's the thing. When this stock inevitably does what it is that I know that it's going to do, where scrutinizing eyes were not on my channel now, because seemingly the two do not correlate, my weekly message with the stock price continuing to remain low, right? The disconnect is very, very real. In other words, Ryan's coming out with his weekly message. It doesn't make a damn bit of difference. The stock price isn't moving. Um, you know, we're going to stop watching the product altogether. It's not making a difference. You know, I, I, I want I want to generate some hype here. The problem I foresee, my friends, is when the stock price inevitably does what I think that it's going to do, and I think it's got a real potential. I think we're sitting on a ticking time bomb here. I do. Um, it concerns me a little bit, if I can just speak honestly through the channel, in that when the stock does end up moving uh, north, um, I am going to be one of the only people that are scrutinized, um, not for putting out content when it was the most difficult to put out content on this company, uh, rather a small channel on YouTube like the Meowing Cat, okay, with GameStop, that put out content on a very consistent basis. Um, the Meowing Cat put out content, I think live streaming um, the stock action every single day. When that happens, I think unfortunately the correlation um, between the stock action and my honest commentary uh, on the company will be misconstrued as such to suggest that um, I, I, I arbitrarily built in some momentum behind the stock that would not have been there had it not been for my consistent message. Uh, and my friends, those who have been with me this entire time would know that that's a far cry from the truth. Um, but could it be perceived as such to, um, to have provided an insight on an opportunity? And there was a brief mention uh, by one of the SEC compliance officers uh, during that Eat the Rich video when they were going through the evaluation of how this happened. And the SEC compliance officer actually said that, look, we want open dialogue in the marketplace. We want people to provide their opinions. We want people to offer what it is they see uh, in the marketplace, and they actually encourage it to happen. Okay. And that was something that really put me at ease here in that I'm not trying to do that. I'm not trying to hype the stock. I, I'm truly at a sub $3 level trying to let you guys know that this right here is providing just about as good as an opportunity. And that ticking time bomb that I talk about marching over the next 15 months is going to start to uncover some of the things that this isn't, this isn't something that I'm generating out of hype. This is fact. This is what we know about the company. When we look at the po company positives, we can evaluate and scrutinize as appropriate. When we look at the company negatives, we can look at, evaluate, identify, and see where some of those can be scrubbed, perhaps maybe how some of those can be improved upon. But all of, the, all of these are facts. And the idea about what I'm trying to do through the channel, and I try very, very hard to try to stay to what it is that we know, okay? I believe what the company is going to do into the future. But there's not a lot of that 
in, in my weekly dialogue in saying, hey, you need to buy the stock because I think it's going to be here six months down the line. That type of speculation has no place in the stock market whatsoever, because where people are quick to do that through social media, I'm here to tell you that I was really disappointed in the amount of people who just blindly jumped on board with a stock story, okay, with GameStop, and failed to recognize that, or didn't even care that the company fundamentals, which is the tried and true place of where you should look. And if you're looking at the fundamentals now, that this story could play out in a month, six months, two years, five years down the line, guys, I don't know when the fundamentals are going to be realized about this company, okay? But my bullish thesis is that at some point, sentiment in the market will shift, sentiment in the company will change, and the stock price, albeit lagging right now, will absolutely follow suit and will be in a, a much better position of, of strength where the stock itself is going to garner the attention that it deserves right now does it deserve that attention i believe that it does okay but highly on right now in its infancy is is you have to you have to look for that information it's not just going to come out it's not just going to punch you in the face even with the gamestop short squeeze you had to look for that information and you had to look for those specific things that could move the stock or, or not move the stock and then take a, a conviction by on what it is that you're seeing in way of information, okay? But the stock positives, I have a couple of things to mention to you guys, and I'll move quickly through the stock because I don't think at this point it's really that important. Um, I think it's the focus of a lot of people's angst, and I think a lot of people, when they evaluate the stock price now, they muddle what it is that they think is the deltas with the company as it reflects to the stock price. I, I think that's a fallacy. I think you need to look at them um, a little bit more independently, okay? Uh, ultimately, the stock price will reflect what it is that the company is going to be foreseen to be able to accomplish in you know, 12 to 18 months out. Uh, and right now, the catalysts that I think will move the stock are not in place just yet, okay? They're not there, and I'll speak about those in just a moment. But I think we are exhausted to the downside. I, I think a few people have talked about a dollar share price. I think that's pretty imaginative. Could it go there? Uh, perhaps. I don't know. I don't really care uh, at this point. I think it's going to be um, one of those real significant failures uh, in the company if the stock price um, is allowed to slip to one or two dollars, and and this sense of of or lack of urgency uh, on behalf of Hylion to to get um, the word out, uh, because I think they're unknown. That's what I think a lot of the problem is. I think the stock price um, really does suffer because of um, uh, silence on the line from day to day, and silence on the line from day to day to day. I tell you what, Nicola founder under fraud investigations, recalling the entire suite of the 97 electric trucks that they released for the seatbelt issue. They, they, they tweet every single day. There's word coming out um, and highly on it's everything they can do to re-release old information. And me personally, I'm getting tired of it. <clears throat> But I do think that the stock has a potential here of being exhausted to the downside. And what does that mean for would-be share owners to maybe put themselves in a position 15 months from now? Um, I think it could be a pr proved to be a phenomenal entry point where I foresee the company going. This is just my personal opinion. And as a bullish shareholder in the company, where I see the company going, and this is why I invest. I don't invest for the past. I invest for the future. OK, it could be providing a phenomenal entry. And I think as far as the stock goes, what is necessary, there's about a million shares traded hand, very anemic volume in the company. There's really no buying interest at all in the company. I think there's a lot of people who are sitting on the shares and actually holding whether or not there's a buy sell rating on the company. Um, the price targets are very, very tight right now around the $4 mark, which represents uh, a pretty good increase now. 
um, and then and then a bottom uh, price projection of, a, of around three dollars, which is actually below um, its low end of the range right now for where it's projected to go. So a very very tight range here. Analysts don't know what to do with the stock price, but. Um, I, I think right now, with the fundamentals that we do know about and those that are intimate about the company, know that right now with the entry, uh, it's intriguing enough to be looking at this opportunity right now at these levels. All right. I'll mention the stock negatives. I, I, this, the stock market sentiment right now, Hylion cannot do a whole lot about that. Okay. I think the market is. The market sentiment is super, super bad right now. I mean, we are in a bear market. We cannot expect, and I actually think as, as a, an objective lens to look at this company, I think Hylion has held in quite well. Uh, I think a lot of the bad news is probably baked into the stock, whatever bad news that was about a new company that has really slipped into oblivion. Uh, and and I, I think market sentiment right now is one of those things that are going to continue to hold the stock down unless there's something earth shattering that comes out. I don't see that sentiment changing over the next couple of months, especially over the next quarter as we march out of 2022 and march into what I think is going to be a transitional year. Whereas I thought that 2022 was going to be that desert, that bridging that I talked about into what I consider to be a transition year. Uh, I do think that the latter half of 2023 is going to be that transition that, the, that we're working toward, as opposed to the first part of 2023, which could prove to be a lot of what uh, has been demonstrated in 2022, barring any major catalyst with the company or announcements from this, uh, from the CEO, Thomas Healy. Um, we are in a rut right now. And I think when a stock gets there, especially below the $5 mark, um, it's going to be very, very difficult for this company to claw their way out. I see companies that are doing some phenomenal things um, in the micro cap space. Um, I see companies in the micro cap space that make more money than Hylion and Hylion is a, you know, 550, 600 million dollar company. And the further they stay in that rut, the longer it's going to take to pull out, it's going to take uh, some of those catalysts that I think they are absolutely um, capable of delivering on, uh, which could pull the sentiment out quickly. Um, stock could overnight over $10, easy with the right uh, uh, um, set of circumstances and right amount of catalyst that could actually pull this thing into where I think that it needs to be. Right now, it's in unrespectable category. Uh, and I think the stock deserves to be um, given a little bit more credit for the progress that they've made. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll just have to wait right now because it's dead action right now uh, in the negative stock sentiment. There's no volume I talked about. Uh, and then finally, the stock negative that uh, I want to bring to everybody's attention that's fallen off the radar is we are st still sitting on a 14% short interest on the company, which is high. Anything over 10% is high. Um, there's still a lot of people out there that uh, would suggest that this 15-month bridging uh, period based on the new projections from Hylion uh, is not going to render any type of growth or appreciation, perhaps maybe even further downside. Um, I'm surprised at the short interest right now with the current cast position that they have because you're betting against um, real tangible equity, <laughs> you know? Um, so I, I don't, I don't understand that. I would not place that bet. That would not be something that I would uh, consider to be prudent um, as an investing strategy. I think there's plenty of companies out there that are actually in trouble where GameStop, um, the short uh, interest in that was 100% justified. Now they got caught with their pants down, but looking at a company that, at, that is actually failing, uh, is one thing to put such a high short position on. I don't think uh, Hylion uh, deserves that. Now in two years, if they have not garnered sales and they have not garnered or solidified what I'm going to talk about with regard to fortifying their relationship with the OEMs um, starts to, to flounder uh, and, and starts to uh, incur bankruptcy talks or incur takeover talks or insolvency or um, diluting shareholders or reverse stock splits, things like that, that are being discussed right now, <laughs> um, I, I think that's pretty imaginative because I, I think Hylion is pretty solid with their current financial footing. 
Um, and I think to have a short uh, position in um, in the company right now is only helping to manufacture this um, this low stock price. Um, it's going to have to break free of that. Um, sorry to break it to you, but this is just the big leagues here. Um, and Hylian, I think, certainly could do a better job of acting like a publicly traded company. Um, they still have kind of a feeling and an aura about them of not being a major player um, in the space. They, they, they seemingly are stuck into this kind of garage mentality and, and turning out uh, a few anemic units here and there. Guys, that's not going to work on the major scale. Thomas Healy knows this. No, but I, unfortunately, the perception that I get from the company is that they're still small potatoes uh, and that they're happy being there. And, and until they can start to solidify some of these relationships, they're going to remain there. And, and the short interest is just going to remain uh, until they can prove that they can break those chains free. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about the company positives last I'm going to talk about what I feel like is the company negative from my perspective now. And I don't mean this to, to put forth this information to impugn highly on. These are just things that I observe now uh, in the fall of 2022, which I chalked up to be a loss. I really did. I, I just thought that this um, with the, the earnings, uh, uh, top end earnings uh, revenue projections that were going to be um, had in 2022, I knew that this was going to be a very lean year and it is shaping up to be just that, um, albeit very disappointing, to be honest with you, with the company. Um, but something that I identify as a negative with the company, projections initially when they came out in 2020 called for a mass ramp up of sales. Now they're not going to make that, okay? One of the last things that Louis Baltimore talked to me about before he exited Hylion, he, he, he told me, he said, you know, some of the grumblings around some of the upper management was to suggest that they wished that they would have never come out with that original investor presentation that was so bullish on projecting sales so early on in the evolution of the company. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> no shit. Because... It, it, it put a lot of in, in investors, me, one of them, um, I'm pretty jaded uh, on that. And a lot of the bullish shareholders in the company, it surprises me how they seemingly have an inability to scrutinize this company. And I don't understand that. It doesn't mean that I don't love the company, but through that love does not mean that I can't be scrutinizing on based on what I see. And people can disagree with me. They can agree with me. It doesn't really matter. Okay. But the relationship now, if they are going to step into mass scale uh, and, 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 and scale up of their units and, and push forward massive volume to the fleets, they have to have that relationship with the OEM that they talked about all the time. And I've heard nothing on this front. And this is where some of the bullish shareholders may disagree with me on this evaluation. It's too bad. You can disagree with me all you want. But there has been no discussion at all with when Hylion, 15 months from now, has their supply chain issues satisfied. They've got all the parts they need. They've got a flood of orders. Whether or not they can just push those orders over to Peterbilt and have them start cranking out hundreds, dare I say, thousands of orders from Hylion, guys, we're not there. We are just not there because we have not been provided ample transparency to understand that 15 months from now, Thomas Healy isn't going to say, hey, hold on now. Nope, nope. We've got another strategic roadmap, and it's going to push us to 2027. It's going to take us to international scale. But that whole thing with Peterbilt, yeah, we're not going to be able to follow through with that. We're going to actually build a roadmap toward mass scale and, and commercialization using a different strategy. The reasons why I speculate on that, and it's quite frankly rude to do that based on the trajectory that we're heading toward with partnering with Peterbilt and, and the OEM, is that we have heard nothing on this front, nothing. And okay, well, maybe it's not important, Ryan. No kidding. You honestly feel that way? You feel like the critical connection between Hylion, who is not an OEM, uh, to produce that mass scale on Hylion's benefit, to turn out the very flagship product that we're so excited about is not a big deal, that we don't deserve some level of transparency to understand how many units the, uh, uh, that Peterbilt can handle um, once Hylion shakes out 
some of these supply chain issues or whatever it is in way of funk that they need to shake loose of to make sure that we can step into some level of self-sustainability with Hylion. Because it, we are going to exhaust this $500 million. We're going to exhaust it. Um, and as we march toward that critical mass of self, uh, uh, self-reliance as a company, and that cash burn starts to get more aggressive, we need to be able to supplement through top-end revenue, but more importantly, even mark- marching towards some assurance that we can actually make some bottom line uh, earnings in the company to supplement this cash burn. It's it's going to be a real wild ride, and and I find this to be one of the biggest, most um, frustrating things with Hylion now, is that on the onset they were so quick to propose that they were going to churn out thousands and thousands of orders based on what solidified relationship with the OEM at that time. Has it differed? Has it detracted from? Or has it imp- been approved upon since then? See, that's the thing is they've announced the generator. They've announced Peterbilt as being that main OEM. What has happened since then to make sure that that bridge from an original projections is going to carry through and they're going to be able to realize in part or in full those initial discussions and relationships uh, that were so bullish on the onset when we march toward this inevitable you know, latter part of 2023 that I speak about so intimately. And I don't want to be speaking on false pretenses, but we are not provided any type of transparency on this front, at least what I've been able to um, to, to, to see across the landscape. Hylion seems to be focused on themselves and they seem to be focused on flying a drone through the facility and, and, and putting a lot of focus on the people sitting at desks um, and the few trucks that are in the bay. Uh, that's not going to put, that's not going to move the needle. What's going to move the needle is their uh, relationships with their existing uh, parts providers, the OEMs, and their relationship with now Cummins, previously Meritor. Those are the keys. Strip those things away, um, and you've got a really, really fancy uh, science fair project. Okay. Now, I hate to be a Debbie Downer, but that's one of the big deltas that I see here. Okay. Uh, the company delay with regard to the company, I don't put this 100% on Hylion. Uh, I have to believe that the supply chain issue, some would say, well, there's not a supply chain issue. Um, I speak with people in industry all the time. And my friends, people are having problems right now finding paint. Um, there is absolutely a supply chain issue. Is this Hylion's fault? No, it is not. It's one of those things that I put in the Delta category when I'm talking about Hylion as a company, but I don't necessarily directly blame Hylion. I just would merely suggest that they're in an um, inconvenient position now with the timing of the supply chain affecting some of the things that, that, that Hylion has going on in their line. Um, um, with finalizing some of their products. And, 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 and again, I don't, I don't blame this of, on Hylion. I just put it in the Delta category as something that they're just going to have to work through. When the supply chain issue shakes, it'll be something that I put into the positive category. But for right now, it is absolutely something that is drawing on the company progress for sure. Um, this is something that I'm, I'm hard on, and there's a, a ton of people that disagree with me on this. And what I find interesting is where there will be people who support me, they hate it. They hate it when I'm critical of the company. And I'm critical of the company based on their lack of transparency. I'll, I'm just going to throw it out there. There's going to be people who say you're not being patient enough, Ryan. That's bullshit. You just get the F out of my face with that, okay? This company is doing a horrible, horrible job of providing ample transparency, okay? If they're as excited as we are about being share owners in the company, about the vision and the movement going forward, then they should be sharing this story 100% across the board. And people are gonna disagree. Ah, they're working hard behind scenes. Ah, they're doing enough. Ah, just ignore the noise. No, 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 don't ignore the noise. Sit up and listen to the scrutiny, man, because right now, As it does reflect back, I'm not one to completely sever 
what's going on in a negative connotation with the company and the current stock price right now, which my friends, I hate to remind you, sits at $2.88, which is embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Okay. So what is the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting the same uh, different results, right? Well, they've been doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting different results. And I hate to remind you that the continued exacerbated pressure to the downside of the stock is still there. Change something up. I don't know. Um, I'm about fed up so far as to say that, look, if nobody's interested in your product, just say so. Just say so. We lost our relationship with Peter Bilt. They're not going to be able to turn out the numbers. Be transparent. I feel like I don't have enough trust at this point with the company, which is another delta, is that there's been way, way too many bridges as far as promises made with this company and their lack of ability to follow through on those promises, as well as their convenient shift to the right on roadmaps on, hey, we know we promised this over here, but we're going to go ahead and go over here. We'll eventually get to a promising end. It's not going to be the promising end that we promised over here, but hey, you believe in us. We're going to shift direction and we're going to, we're going to push it out 24 months to get to that end. Just, just hang with us this entire time. Hylion does not have the luxury of time on its side. Now, we may look back on this time and say, wow, having that global pandemic overhang for Hylion helped them immensely. In, in other words, the wave of EV momentum did not take foothold until Hylion had a, an ample time to shake out the cobwebs as far as an organization goes. They really did use that time to the best of their ability. But where is that assurance right now? We, might, we are in the depths of a neon green hell right now with regard to the stock price. And I think the lack of, uh, of, of, of transparency in way of progress, re-releasing old information really speaks to a, a lack of imagination on part of their PR department. And I've been hard on them the entire time. Have they incrementally improved since the beginning, which was anemic at best? It was insufficient. It was below par. Okay, let's just call it for what it is. Have they improved to date? Yes, absolutely. I'll be quick to give credit where credit is due. But is there always an opportunity to aggressively pay the, the, the story forward? Yeah, I do. I do. If they could take half of the passion that I bring every single Sunday, I tweet every single day on Hylion every single day, whether it be a knock on the company for what I perceive to be lack of information, which is usually the, the basis of my frustration. When I have tweets that come out, I'm quick to say, hey, good job. I fluffed that ass. When there's a few things that come out to say, hey, the initiative is going great. They're building new RNG stations. Yeah. How does that benefit the Hylion community? How does that benefit your company? And what, it, what does it mean for you to provide fuel along routes that didn't exist before the announcement. I, I, I fail to understand how Hylion celebrates, you know, all of these things with regard to uh, global uh, uh, carbon emissions reductions initiatives, and they they don't they don't celebrate these these as a comeback to how Hylion can actually um, benefit from it, or that the momentum is pushing in a direction that's going to somehow benefit Hylion. It's almost like, yeah, we're cheerleading from the garage. And, you know, everybody puts their wrenches down for two seconds and is like, hey, the world's moving forward. Um, but we, we are not, <laughs> you know, and it's like, come on, guys, man, you, you need to get on board a little bit better. And you need to infuse that energy that the Hylion community seems to have but is that energy built on false pretenses? Uh, and I think they can do a better job of fortifying the energy toward the vision that um, they've been so quick to sell people on over the last two years um, and, and, and really look to get excited about where that energy could take us into the future because that's where the importance lies. Um, that's, that's really where the, the excitement lies is seeing this vision through and where Hylian sees themselves five years down the line, where do they see themselves next year, right? I know a lot of people have a hard time telling the future the way I do, right? It's not about that. It's just speculating on where the company sees themselves in the future with what we know now 
and where they see themselves in the future. And they, they, don't, they don't talk like that a lot, right? Yeah, they bought the agnostic generator. There was some phenomenal news around putting it into different, different applications. What has came out of that? Pre, too premature? Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Maybe it's just a lack of vision in that they take these initiatives and supplement where they think Hylion can help augment this movement as a grander movement uh, as a small company looking to make it right now. All right. Uh, negative with the company, no negative, no, no current sales. Um, that's a drag a little bit. I think with the stock action right now, bottoming out here and stuck in a rut, I, I don't think it really matters one way or the other. I mean, if they come out with a 10 order reserve backed by deposits this week, I don't think it's going to move the needle. I don't, I don't think it matters. The only thing that's going to matter is when we start to build in merit to those orders. Um, could it mean to follow on orders within the respective fleets that are placing those initial orders? How is it that those fleets are going to be guaranteed to get their trucks in a timely manner? That's key. Talked about it with the OEM relationship. You can put 10,000 orders on the book all you want, Hylion, but you've provided zero, zero expectation of what to expect on how they're going to deliver on those orders, right? A again, are you just going to keep a backlog for the next 10, 20 years and just say, yep, we've got all these orders back by deposits, but... People aren't going to get their trucks until 2040. I don't know. I hate to pick fun a little bit, but yeah, I do. I do because you've provided zero, zero expectation outside of an original investor presentation that would suggest that you had all the cards in place to deliver on tens of thousands of orders, at least thousands of orders. I mean, the expectation for this year was what, 8,000 units? Guys, that's thousands of units. How did you realistically expect to do that? And now it's like we get a 10 order and me, I don't give a shit. I don't, I don't give a shit at all. I don't care because 10 orders is not going to move the needle based on what they originally said. Hey, based on this relationship with the OEM, they're going to assist us when we put our powertrain because we're not a full OEM uh, into these rigs and they're happy to do that. I, I, I don't have any clarity on that. Um, I'm hoping as the story develops over the next 15 months, hope, hope, we love to invest in hope, don't we? That, that these things are going to be answered and solidified as we go forward. And I, I'd love the bulls and the company. And I know the bears will come on and they'll, they'll challenge me on that. But, you know, I, I get more scrutiny from just as much from the bulls as I do the bears. Yeah, it's going to happen because Thomas Healy said it's going to happen. Really? Really? Is that really how you want to um, look at this opportunity uh, with blind faith? Uh, I'm, I'm a little more of a realist than a lot of the bulls in this company. Mm, I am. I am. And <clears throat> every now and then I get a whim of criticism from the bulls. And it's like, ah, oh, Ryan, you need to enjoy the ride from people that I respect in the utmost. And it's like, hey, I appreciate that. That's great. I, I thank you. But you're not me. Uh, and in all fairness, I'm not you either. If you can go at this thing with blind faith and understand that we're going to be at 50, 100, you know, 100 plus dollars someday, um, I, I'm not going to get there on blind faith. I'm going to get there with my own um, road uh, and my own scrutiny over the company and critically evaluate through the process what it is that I see about what they're doing and what they're not doing. And that's basically how I see this company and what they're not doing right now. I think we're in kind of a dead zone in the evolution of the company, I talked about the back half of 2022, uh, finishing up Q1, excuse me, Q4, uh, stepping into 2023, establishing Q1 as kind of that new, uh, the new era, that transitional era, where I think things are going to get interesting. And this would be the time that in a perfect world, I would like to just step away from social media and be like, my, my work here is done. Get back to fundamental passive investing, which I think the masses need to do. Um, I don't think that, uh, if anything, eat the rich proved to me that that's not what people are looking for. People are looking to get rich, rich overnight. They are. And they're not interested in investing for the long term. Institutional investors are buying into this right now and suggesting that all retail investors look at a long term perspective as being one to three years. And it's just a pop shot. Um, in, in, in other words, presuming that all retail investors don't have the maturity like I do to suggest that buying and holding stock inevitably um, is the way to go. You never need to buy uh, Coke with the uh, uh, expectation of selling it within one to three years. That's just not how it works. 
uh, Pepsi, Home Depot, J and J, PG, same thing, right? I think they'd get a different opinion, and um, that's another reason why I put my message out there. Um, my resume and the way I approach stock uh, is out there, and, and it's out there to be evaluated, scrutinized, uh, criticized, if that's the way you see fit. Um, but once the momentum starts to shift on this, um, I, I should be uh, earmarked for good or for worse as one of the only people that uh, told this story for where I think it could go rather than where I think it has been. And that's going to make all the difference, my friend, in, the, in this story. When we start to gain a little momentum, um, I would love to take a step back. Um, the problem is I don't think I've done anything wrong. Uh, I, I think sharing my message will help a ton of people out there um, that uh, don't have the stock bandwidth, that do not have the stock IQ uh, that I have to identify what I see fundamentally in this company. Fundamentally. Ah, oh, they don't have sales, Ryan. Yes, they do. They do have sales. They do. It trickles in anemically right now, as to be expected in the young evolution of this company. Is it your assumption that they will never garner another sale going forward? Okay, tell me why. All right. But I'm not going to join you in agreeing with these false statements. That's a false statement that they don't have sales. I just suggested that they don't have any recent sales. That's a fact. Okay. All right. But to, but to talk about the anemic sales now when, the, when, when are basically considered pre-sales, they, they haven't even said that. And they should have said it. They should just earmark all of these as pre-sales because that's what they are. The connotation that you get from a pre-sale is to suggest that, wow, these people are entering into the sales game right now when they can't even take receipt of the product. They believe so much in the product that they're able to put down this deposit on this pre-sale, um, not even understanding, at least I don't understand, maybe they understand when they're going to actually take delivery of these rigs, which is probably pushed all the way forward to 2024 at this point but they feel so confident in entering into these pre-sales right now that um, they're, they're willing to put uh, that major dollars down on the deposit to, to secure those slots. That to me is a positive. So when you say no sales, I'm gonna kindly disagree with you because you're just factually wrong, okay? The company does have sales. And now as early as it is in the evolution of this company to have whatever sales they've been able to garner on the books right now is quite frankly, my friends, very, very impressive. Okay. Uh, albeit, I'd love to see more sales. I tweet. I'm very hard on highly on, on on Twitter. It doesn't matter. They don't read my text anyway. They've ghosted me. They don't even read them. So what's the point? Um, my aim in doing that is to get people thinking along these lines that sales are going to be the inevitable key to success. Okay. You can talk all you want about how bullish you are on highly on and how it's great. And Thomas Healy's a rock star. And the team is great, and the board of directors is great, and the vision is great, and the great, and the great, and the fuel is great, and the Carno is great, and great, and great. At the end of the day, they have to sell the shit. They have to sell the shit to people, okay? It's a company. They have to sell it. It's a company. They can exist up until the point where they have sales. They have to sell it. They have to sell it to people. That is the key. Ah, Ryan, you know, they, they have to sell it my friends, even my bullish friends in the community, they have to sell it, okay? Is there indication enough up to this point that they've done enough in the sales category to generate some interest? Me personally, I look at the 200 that are on the books right now and the 2000 reservation order books as being sufficient. Let's be fair, sufficient, mm, sufficient. Can they do better? Probably. Um, can they do better because they aren't trying hard enough? Nah, see, I think that's way too presumptuous on our part. Um, but I will look for this to be an area of improvement uh, in the company. And it is what it is at this point. Now, the company positives, I want to end on this note, okay? Um, so for the bullish shareholders that had to stomach my, 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 my company negatives, okay, I really wish they would get on board with me on this. I really do. I feel like I'm somewhat alone on this constructive criticism, okay? It's part of my pedigree um, that in my organization with my day job, which is, this is not it, okay? You can't just come to the table and be critical without a, a path forward about a resolution, something that you criticize constructively and say, man, I don't know, this isn't right. And we're encouraged to do so. 
Like it's part of our pedigree, not to just go with the status quo all the time. And Hey, everything's hunky dory and this is great. And everything will work out eventually. And hey, if it doesn't, that's okay. It's still hunky dory. Nah, it doesn't work that way. If you find something that's wrong or perceived to be wrong, talk about it. If by nature of consensus, people look at your observation and say, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think we're okay maintaining the status quo, but noted, thank you very much. We move on and it's good to go. It's business. That's not personal. But I all too often feel like I'm somewhat on an island on this. And if there will be some people in the future when this thing does shift and the sentiment shifts, um, I hope those people don't remember all of the bad things that I said about the company and misconstrue them as bad rather than constructively critical. I'm calm right now, okay? I'm calmly critical of a company that is young in its inception and growing every single day toward a vision for the future, okay? But that growth is going to mean nothing unless they can garner, ah, say it with me, say it with me, sales. And, and I wish these criticisms of the company, I, I, I actually, the one person, the one person, one, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not asking for validation, I'm not asking for friendship, and I'm not asking for, uh, for support. I'm not asking for that. I don't need it. I'm independent. I'm very, very proud of that. I'm independent of my thought, my application. If you learn anything from me, it's not how to follow me. It's to be how, how to be independent yourself. But silent alert, silent alert is the one person that I think is critical, has uh, probably a lot more tact than I do. Um, and proper kudos go out to Silent Alert. I think he's uh, uh, a critical contributor to this community. I think he's a critical advocate and one that has got the ear of Thomas Healy, I think, uh, more so than I do, that's for sure. Um, and, and I want to do my part to give an ample shout out to Silent Alert because where I'll be quick to criticize and maybe even step over the bounds of criticism because why? Because I don't know, I feel like you've earned it. Like suck it up and whip some ass. Like I, I'm just a little bit more like, I don't know, like grind. Show, show us that you're putting in the extra time here because you believe in your vision so much that you can taste it. Okay, that's the intensity that I bring to the table. Silent Alert will also support those initiatives and kind of be like, yeah, I don't, I don't know if this meets muster. I don't know if this is good enough, man. Could you, could you give us a little more color around what the information means as it pertains to Hylion, right? So proper kudos go out to Silent Alert. You're going to want to follow Silent Alert on Twitter. Very easy to follow. Um, he's one of the very few people that I follow. I don't follow but 16 people on Twitter. Um, there's a bunch of people who follow me, but I don't follow a lot of people. I don't like to be influenced by a lot. Most of them have to do with the Hylion circle that I follow, but you can follow Silent Alert if you can't find it. Just uh, uh, look for his handle on my account and you can follow Silent Alert um, because these opinions are going to grow as the companies grow and you're going to want to be on board with some of these few figureheads of information that push that out. Company positives. Here we go. Bullish shareholders. You can get your beer now. I'm ready to somehow manufacture some hype around the stock. The funny thing about it is, man, highly on with regard to 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 hype. Uh, I, I think there's enough positives out here to to just earmark uh, and be satisfied with what they have going on. The company has no debt. Okay, if I'm going to back a company that is this early on in the stages of its evolution, it's going to have no debt. And furthermore, to supplement these two that go kind of hand in hand, um, their cash position is very, very strong. Do they have what they need to put some of what I consider to be, yes, I address some of the fragmented pieces together to materialize into something special, i.e. sales, that sales, sales. Do they have it? These are two fundamental aspects of the company that are absolutely phenomenal. When you look at the fundamentals of the company, they have been provided everything that they've needed in way of funding their path to, um, to commercialization, all right? How much that path is gonna lead toward profitability is yet to be seen. Therein lies the risk and the investment. And I could do go down a whole bearish uh, thesis on Hylion, which is what I would 
stress each and every investor out there to scrutinize, uh, dare dare to look at, dare to look at an opportunity from the from the other lens, from another perspective. Dare to do that, okay? Because where I think a lot of people will uh, um, quickly uh, put to work blind followership. Um, look at the eat the rich with GameStop because that's what happened. It was blind followership. Um, they had no idea when to sell that stock. They had no idea when to buy that stock. They just blindly went in. And for those that made a few hundred grand, I, they'll piss it away in five years. Trust me, they weren't prepared for that money. They'll piss it away. The few people that they could find to actually interview, um, what was interesting, uh, you'll lose your blonde girlfriend eventually. Um, because you, you, you will be not perceived as some sort of like um, winning the lottery anymore, rather just a normal person who came into an opportunity that won a lot of money, won a lot of money. But when I look at Ileon, it's easy to look at the positives of the company and get excited about where they are currently. Okay. Now, no debt and the cash position is strong. The, the, the real thing that I sit back sometimes and look at highly on is their product is phenomenal. <laughs> it's laughably phenomenal. Okay. Comparatively speaking, when we look at the GameStop and I looked at GameStop during that whole debacle and I was like, wow, the impression that I get with GameStop is um, I walk in, I see overpriced used games and it smells like a, a marijuana repository. That's the impression that I get, along with a lot of bare walls, because I walked into a lot of game stops and they all smelled the same. It all smelled the same, like somebody who was suffering from rigor mortis just got off their couch enough to either need a 10 sack and go and sell their video game to get that 10 sack, right? Or to trade it in on somebody else's need to have a 10 sack and that they've gone in and they've, they've done that themselves, right? That was the impression that I got from GameStop, okay? That's why during that whole debacle, I was like, hmm, that, it's interesting. Uh, I have zero desire whatsoever to put any money on this. But when we look at Hylion's product, do they have a product? Well, they don't have a product, Ryan, just like they don't have sales, okay? Again, separating false narrative from the truth. And the truth right now is that we're being provided some trickles of information to suggest that yes, indeedy, Hylion, unlike our Nikola counterpart, can actually go uphill hauling 80,000 pounds, something that I have not yet seen from Nikola. I've seen them go downhill and they go downhill really well. Uh, and in all fairness, I've actually seen Nikola on the test track. They do really, really well on the test track. They kick ass. They're, they're the test track champions, as far as I'm concerned. Um, but that area that uh, Hylion was just uh, uh, pushed out, I think it was by Lake Havasu, I believe, in Arizona, something like that. Um, I'd like to see some work in Oregon. But remember, the hyper truck is for long haul, I think more flat applications along I-10, right? Uh, some of those, some of our major highways, I-84, going across the country. I think that's where Hylion is going to provide a big, big supplement to the market when this product is brought to market. And that way, I think sales will be what I consider to be, I talk about investing all the time. A dividend is a rendering from a well-laid plan. Where I see Hylion, as their product, sales will be a render of a well-laid plan. Okay. Does that make sense to you guys? So where I say sales, 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 I, I'm inevitably talking about those sales in being inevitable, being a forthcoming, uh, being an obvious thing where eventually two, three, maybe five years down the line, we're looking at this and we're going, uh, sales is not the issue. Okay. They're going to stop reporting sales number and just start reporting top end, uh, revenues and the bottom line profit that's rendered in this company, because I think sales will just be a product of a well-laid plan, a rendering of a well-laid plan through their, through their product. Pro the product is phenomenal. It's, it's phenomenal. And I think somehow it gets misconstrued somehow. We know Hylian does have a product. The question is, how good is that product? How good is it? What are the specs? 
we know what Hylion has projected. We know their ability to move into more of a fuel agnostic type of a future. Uh, we know that RNG and CNG is going to be a major catalyst. Some people are saying that CNG is dead on arrival. Um, you need to smoke more because you're completely off base with this. Um, renewables is absolutely a player. And you know, what's funny is I, I don't understand why the Nikola camp can, can't come out and be like, wow, new RNG uh, uh, fueling facilities coming online. Wow, RNG tax credits. Hmm, that's interesting. Um, I've always suggested that RNG was going to be dead on arrival um, and acknowledge those successes. Um, we never see those acknowledges. And um, I think it's unfortunate, the whole back and forth between Nikola and Hylion. Uh, I don't do that. I compare the two. Last week, I compared the two positives and deltas the way I see it. Um, could I be wrong in my perception? Sure, sure. I guess so. I guess. I don't think I am. I, I try to be as um, as grounded as I possibly can. But the product itself and the specs right now, they are driving uphill. They are able to achieve that thousand miles of range. They are able to haul payload at 80,000 pounds. They are able to actually provide a better driver experience on the road. They are able to, I presume, put their APU unit into the rigor of service and actually provide a better hoteling experience for the driver. They are able to realize this on what was perceived to be you know, a few years back to be a, a, a vision. And right now they're realizing that vision along the CNG RNG front. And while these stations are being built, the momentum is only churning below the surface. Now, when I talk about a ticking time bomb, fleets are going to soon realize that all of these things that the product can do, the product can deliver. Whether or not you like Hylion or not, I don't like the color scheme. I don't like Thomas Healy. I don't like this and I don't like that. Well, my friends, if you're failing to acknowledge your dislike or like of the product itself and not suggest that they've got a pretty damn good idea, you, your, your, your assessment of this company is just dead wrong. Sorry to tell you. And there's going to be people who are going to be pissed at me for sitting across from them and telling them you're dead wrong. The ability to not be reliant on the grid and to bring your charging mechanism to you in its simplest form is just a freaking phenomenal idea. I hate to break it to you. As a matter of fact, I don't. Because this very product idea is fantastic. When you strip, strip away all the, I don't like Thomas Healy. I don't like the share price. I don't like this. I don't like that. Fact of the matter is, nobody gives a shit what you like or don't like. The fact of the matter is Hylion is looking to move freight from point A to point B. Can they do that or can they not do that? And how do they do it? Those are the most baseline questions rhetorically that I would expect you guys to answer. Can they deliver freight? Can they deliver it along a specific range? Can they do it with using an alternative fuel source through RNG that is right on the cutting edge of how we're looking at alternatives to moving our freight from point A to point B. I don't want to interrupt the thought processes that are going on in between the membranes, okay, in what I just said to you to get across the fact that the product is phenomenal. The product is phenomenal. Why these fleets aren't putting in orders in the, in the range of a thousand, I don't know. I guess they don't have the excitement that I do around this product. I've talked to people at my work that actually are looking to start a trucking company and they're excited about buying the Hypertruck ERX. Why isn't Anheuser-Busch as excited? We've heard nothing from them, okay? Why isn't some of the other companies that were named in the Innovation Council not stepping up to the plate? Well, it could very well be as simple as an explanation to suggest that they're waiting for that finalized product and waiting for that opportunity for them to validate internally and make that decision independent and solely based on their own internal rigor and proof of concept. I don't know. Maybe it's because they don't want it. I don't know. There's the range of, of decisions that uh, Anheuser-Busch has to make, right? I don't know. Maybe they don't like the product. Maybe they'll just sit on the Innovation Council and they'll never place an order. Do you think that that's likely based on what we know about the entry participation on these initial pre-orders 
uh, from the Innovation Council to suggest that Anheuser-Busch is not going to find a use case for this product. If they don't find a use case for this product, I will eat crow. I will say, I'm sorry, my fellow highly on airs, and, 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 and apologize up and down for suggesting this, that this product does more than what we know that it does now. Ah, it performs phenomenal. It gets the range, downtime, driver experience, torque, horsepower, payload, does it all, but co companies want to move in a different direction. Okay. All right. I don't see why. I don't see why but they've moved in a different direction, Ryan. They, for no reason, are offering that they just don't. Maybe they think Hylion is too small. Maybe they think it's small potatoes. Maybe they don't like Peterbilt. Maybe they don't like the Meritor E-Axle. Maybe they found through their own internal validation that they don't get 1,000 miles of range. Maybe they found out through their own internal validation that they get 350 miles of range and that the Hypertruck ERX will be the biggest flop to enter into the, into the market and that all of this is for naught. Maybe anything's a possibility, I guess, I guess. Um, my conviction ba is based on the specs that have been declared to the open marketplace in a true fashion to state that the highly on range up toward a thousand plus miles of range will blow any vehicle out of the water out there to give that optionality along our ultra long routes out there. I think it's a bullish thesis. Um, and I think people need to really take note of the product itself, the product. Okay. Specifications on the product. We talked about that, the specs, the fuel, the fuel agnostic opportunity, the range, the torque, the hoteling, the driver experience, et cetera, et cetera. Hylion checks all the boxes. Um, I would, if I were to do an evaluation on the fundamentals of GameStop, um, there's no way that I could come on and talk about the things that I talk about highly on. It's the very nature of why I do this weekly video on highly on is because it's easy to talk about. It's easy to get excited about all of the things that they're bringing to bear in the marketplace. It's a lot of fun to talk about. I enjoy doing this. I could do it every day. I really could, but I don't really want to water down. I've, I'm already stressing my audience enough through the independent investor channel. If some of them have already left and they've said, hey, Ryan, Hylion's not for me. I was interested more in your passive income videos. You know, I'm out. I'm unsubscribing. I'm already stressed that audience enough. So once a week is good enough, but I could do this every single day because there's not a day that goes by that I'm not excited about owning this company here at these levels. Super excited about the prospects of where this could end up, all right? Company positive thus far in two years is the growth. Now, the growth has not transpired in a way that would suggest that they are rendering those aggressive sales numbers as projected. I get it. I totally get it. I, I'm upset too. I don't like it. Um, I don't like the fact that that generated so much churn on the onset, and now here we are uh, in a position where we have to be reactive but if we, in all fairness, sit back and we look at the evolution of the growth of this company, it's been pretty remarkable for me to sit in front of you and say that Hylion is out running trucks right now, putting it to the rigor of a full payload, 80,000 pound payload loads that are traversing hills, that are making marks, that are proving that range out, um, that are providing that proof of concept that we've um, uh, only it didn't exist two years ago when the company came 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 to public. Okay, I think they wanted everybody to believe that they had a ready product, and a lot of people said you didn't have a ready product. Or sell the stock, right? That's but that was their excuse to sell the stock. Fine, you, you're you have your own prerogative. If you look back at this, you're going to have two things to critically observe: either oh my goodness. I threw in the towel on the greatest investing opportunity of my life, or I made the right decision by selling. It's going to be one of those two things. Don't, don't live in the middle, okay? Don't live in wishy-washy land. Make a decision one way or the other, okay? And you'd be better for it. Uh, I think a company positive is Thomas Healy. I think where Nicola is shaving shares uh, every single day from the CEO, I think that's funny. That's, that's stopped. Um, I'd like to see that selling stop. And it has. Um, that's been a positive nobody talks about. Um, it, you know, in all fairness, you know, there's there's some Twitter uh, jokes that come through. You know, hey, when's the next time you're going to sell shares, Thomas? You know, um, I didn't blame Thomas at the time that he sold the shares. I understood why he was doing it, and I was quick to say that the optics were bad. 
People disagreed with me. The optics are bad. Whenever your top guy sells shares in a company so early or on, early on in the stages, the optics are bad. The optics are such that the company CEO does not believe in the company. Do we think that Thomas Healy doesn't believe in his own company? Of course not. But the optics would suggest that if you're selling and unloading such big blocks of shares um, at the expense of you know shareholders that are 100% underwater, 100%, the optics are bad no matter how you shake it. But a company positive on Hylion is Thomas Healy himself. I, I, I again suggest when, I, when you listen to this man talk and his mechanical IQ being as high as it is, some would suggest that he's not fit to be CEO. Really? Really? Where some people would say that Elon Musk is the end-all, be-all God on this earth walking, that he's somehow, you know, um, in a position to be that, and he's not. Um, I think it's unfair to suggest that Thomas Healy is the founder and CEO of the company is not fit to be the CEO of the company. Um, I don't know. Perhaps one day when this company is at a point where it's globally recognized, perhaps maybe he takes a sidestep and becomes a technical advisor to the company that he's founded, but that's his prerogative to do that. Um, I think as long as Thomas Healy is involved with Hylion, I think we have a phenomenal future. And in other words, if you took Thomas Healy out of the equation right now, I think the company would suffer. I do. Uh, I think Th Thomas Healy is the one person that can footstomp the very vision that um, he has set forth for the for the future. Uh, and it is my bullish conviction that Thomas Healy at the helm of Hylion is much, much better, especially over these next two critical 24-month sessions, um, especially the next 15-month sessions. And as we move into 2024, 25, to really see this vision through, I, I don't want to see anybody else at the helm. I don't want to see any types of whims about the Hylion CEO stepping down. I don't want to see anything about him being replaced because of the stock performance. The stock is where it is because they deserve to be there. Let me let me just tell you, frankly, okay, um, they have not done enough to garner a stock price north of where it is right now in the marketplace. Plain and simple, okay. But when we're talking about the main man at the helm, I think Thomas Healy has the most chance of seeing this vision through and making those strategic decisions because he's made some tough strategic decisions so far. And I, I think, you know, with the direction of the board taking on the Carnot generator, um, some of the initiatives that they've taken to solidify the Hypertruck ERX Council to, to win over some of those pre-orders so early on in the game, I think all credit has to go to the CEO where I'm quick to scrutinize the lack of transparency and the delays based on supply chain issues, et cetera, which also falls on the head of the CEO. Um, sorry, th that's just the game, okay? Um, I take full responsibility and, and, and credit uh, and scrutiny for what goes on in my company, right? The, the game doesn't change. You're the CEO, you're the head guy. Um, but I absolutely find that Thomas Healy is a positive when we're talking about um, uh, Hylion. Um, the fundamentals of the comp company, we're not going to regurgitate. I've already talked about that. Um, the motive. <laughs> I do want to talk about this a little bit. I kept thinking when I was watching through the, um, uh, the Eat the Rich video, what, what we're looking to save here. All of that hype around that short sale was based on a disconnect between what short sellers and hedge funds were looking at with the company that was right on the money and a bunch of retail investors that poured money into a stock and a stock alone based only on the disconnect between those two entities. Yep, yep. And when I talk about, and I sit back and I say, where is it that you want your money? I've heard through the course of the five years on the independent investor, lots of different uh, differing opinions from independent investors as to why they don't want to invest in Johnson & Johnson, justified. Why they don't want to invest in certain emerging markets. Um, I, I'm one that doesn't invest in them because I can't, right? Um, um, certain niche markets that I uh, cannot participate in. Uh, certain markets that I won't touch, 
certain markets that I won't invest in just because of my my beliefs about staking my money based on, you know, people dying of lung cancer. You get my point, okay? When you sit back and you look at Hyleon and I read through the scrutinizers of the company, I sit back and I say, where, where does this angst come from? Were you burned by the stock and now all of a sudden you, 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 you want to flush the company down the toilet and you want to see it fail? fail? I, I don't know. I, I guess revenge is a pretty, pretty powerful reason as to not like a stock, I guess. I don't know. Kind of dangerous, actually. <laughs> but when you look at investing in Hyleon, don't you look at their vision and, and, and motivation behind what they're doing as being um, somewhat respectable? Uh, I, I do. Their initiative is, is put quite frankly, that if you can drive the Hypertruck ERX up and down the freeway and it can remove pollution from the air, <laughs> and still deliver the product that we are now reliant upon diesel to deliver a highly pollutive uh, fuel that we've been relied upon for the last uh, 10 decades. Isn't that kind of easy of an initiative to get behind? Whether or not you want to stake $1 on the company or buy some shares at the company at $2.88 right now, isn't it kind of cool of an initiative if I'm not a share owner and I just follow the highly on story to say, man, I'd, I'd like to see these guys get the nod, you know, where a GameStop can run up to $500 because of a momentum play. I look at the GameStop debacle as being one of those um, solidifications on the cap and analysis over retail investors that would suggest that retail investors are effing stupid. And we look at Hylion. Hylion, if it dissolves away, um, I'm going to look like a dunce, right? I'm going to look at a dunce, like a dunce. What if all the things that I've talked about um, from week to week, as this story has transpired, materializes into something other than where we are now in this neon green hell? What if it materializes into something? And in evaluation, they go back and they look at the independent investor channel and say, man alive, every single week, this guy came on and Hylion was at the forefront of the conversation. It was at the central point of the conversation. When Ryan felt like it was prudent to focus, hyper-focus on this company, where very few others failed to focus on it, for all the reasons that Ryan talked about with what's going on at the company, as opposed to what's going on with the stock. Now that my friends, that my friends is something that I can get behind. That is something that's special. But Ileon dissolves away, it goes away. Okay, no problem. I'm a successful mindset. I'll end up succeeding no matter what. People ask me all the time, what percentage of Hylion is my portfolio? 7%. 7%. I own 13,000 shares of the company and I own about 42 leaps contracts. Massive position for a retail investor. Uh, I don't deaf around. I'm dead serious about this. Dead serious. From a conviction standpoint, I'm looking at all the right stuff. Okay. Whether or not it materializes or not. Okay. I'm not suggesting that it, that it does. As a matter of fact, 99% of people that are looking at this right now are suggesting that it won't. What if it does? What if it does? Based on all of the fundamentals that we're talking about, Thomas Healy being right there at the advocate of a, or right there as a proponent of a company that's trying to do right in the, in the world, trying to do right. I'm not a tree hugger, okay? Okay. I'm not a supporter of the green initiative because the green initiative seems to suggest that businesses need to go out of business, right? Uh, to save the world in 10 years. Okay. I'm not, I'm not on that camp. I look at Hylion with my objective lens, my objective lens. And I would suggest that 
and 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 the green initiative people would say you know fossil fuels are evil <laughs> we can't we can't do cng cng has to go away cng is evil we need to strap all cng to a rocket and send it to the moon and strap it to the moon we need to eye bolt it to the moon because it has no place on the earth no place i say ryan i say that's why we have hurricanes every month. Okay. If that be the case, and we look at an opportunity like Hylion, wouldn't you suggest that Hylion's vision for the future moves us in a better direction or a worse direction? My friends, when you start to um, either uh, support or continue to be critical on my message, no problem. Um, I'm not the greatest communicator in the world, but over time, if you pick up little tidbits as to why I do this project, why I am so convicted upon this company, okay, and the idea that a, a steward of investing and a critical evaluator of stocks and a critical evaluator of, of a company as, as big as me not to be called upon with that um, um, retail community that uh, I look at the GME debacle and I think, you know what, you guys think you won when in all actuality, you effing lost, you effing lost. Because not only did you lose for a lot of people and those are the people you'll never hear from, you lost a lot of money for a lot of people. You proved to a lot of retail investors, man, that all they need to do is look for that next best thing, to not be a, criti a critical uh, advocator for those companies that have fundamental backing. And if we could take some of the generation of some of the pedigree that made that movement a possibility into the future, volume, mm -hmm, which is that's exactly what it takes, is volume in the share price. This company has all of the stars aligned to realize that, uh, that end. And once that starts to happen, my friends, it is going to be something on the tip of my tongue that I will not step away from. I will embrace. Uh, I will play into. It will be the very momentum shift that I will say, I told you. I told you at a time when nobody believed it, that it would happen, okay? And it is going to happen. It is inevitable that something over the coming years, when and if it happens, has the greatest potential to happen now at this particular stock price as it reflects this dark period for the company as we emerge into a transition year next year. And my friends, it is going to be special. Because unlike the people in GME that were subjected to pulling the buy button out of an application Robin Hood that made two founders on the onset individually wealthy to the tune of two and a half billion dollars each, um, I laugh every single day when I see Robin Hood going into the toilet. Um, I, for one, am going to pull chocks from Robin Hood. It's something that I've been very critical on. Um, I received a lot of shit for it. That's for sure. When I took out my opinion on Robin Hood uh, for cash for order flow, I think it should be illegal. It's illegal in a lot of countries. It's not illegal here. And these two assholes benefited from it. But with regard to the Hylion opportunity, isn't it going to feel good to be able to sit on our cash position and not have to worry about when we need to hit the sell button, rather to sit on this for multi-year expansion, multi-year benefit? And this, my friends, is going to be the project of a lifetime. When people look and scrutinize my evaluation of this company, when they scrutinize my evaluation and conviction during a time when all schools of thought would suggest that I should be looking in a different direction, people are going to be baffled by this very story right here that we foot stomp for the would-be investors, the Independent Investor Channel, every single week with devote conviction because the opportunity is that real. Guys, I appreciate you tuning in to the message, man. Hit the subscribe button if you're interested in joining the community. Hell, unsubscribe if you don't want to be here. I don't want you here, okay? 
because the conviction and the opportunity that I speak about every single week is very, very real. Take advantage or get the F out of the way. I don't want you here. Okay. Leave your comments at the bottom of the video, share the message with anybody out there that's interested in the EV space, bring them on, bring them on, introduce them to the fundamentals of a story that actually does have a company story rather than a stock story. And we look at to focus the majority of our time on the company story rather than manifest around the stock action week to week. Guys, I appreciate you tuning in for the totality of this message and good luck in your investment future.